Good morning, everybody. I hope that you all had a very blessed and wonderful Easter. I really hope that you guys were able to enjoy time with family in the sense of being with them and having some God with you. And also at the same time being able to celebrate because alleluia, Jesus is risen. And we're very blessed for that because our God is truthful, as we've talked about, and he promises us that if we follow him, everything will be fine. So if Jesus was able to rise up and the coronavirus couldn't stop him, guess what that means? We can all rise up and this coronavirus won't stop us. Now, the other day I asked a question on the Google Classroom um, about whether or not if I were to ask you kids to get whatever you have around your house to celebrate in a spiritual communion as a symbol, what would you do? And that's sort of a trick question because I know a lot of students will just probably say, well, the teacher told me to do it, so I'm going to go ahead and do it. Now, six of you said you would, and the most common thing was tortilla, which I found pretty funny. Uh, a lot of you really like tortillas. I don't blame you. I like tortillas myself. In fact, when I was at Frontier, I was the main tortilla person. It was really fun. Um, then, let's see, I sort of lost track because of that. Then, I had four students, one student was in the middle. They say, if I was going to do this, I'd get this, but I'm not really sure if I really should. And then, there was two students that were adamant, we are not doing this. You are disrespecting Jesus. Jesus cannot just be anything. And then, one student said they wouldn't do it because it needs to be the body and blood of Christ. Um transubstantiation. So, let me go ahead and explain why I asked this question. During this Easter season, I don't know how, and during this Lenten season, I've noticed you kids have been watching the daily masses. I'm hoping and praying you're watching the whole thing, and not just, you know, watching the homily, because receive your spiritual communion. But we also see here, during this entire time of watching these daily masses, has Father De Palma, or any priest you've been watching, once said, Go to your house, go grab things to symbolize the body and blood of Christ. I'm going to say no. I haven't seen a priest do that from anyone. I've been actually watching quite a few priests. And I've been talking to my family and friends because my parents and them watch the ones that are able Belen. My sister watches the one for um, St. Thomas Aquinas. My brother Gabriel California is watching for their priest. No one's been doing it. So there was a bit of a trick question there, because I didn't ask in a setting. I just asked if I asked you in general. Then, the second part, a symbol. Now, the reason I bring this up is because to other church denominations, the Eucharist is only a symbol. The bread and the wine is a symbol. It's not really him. So, knowing all this information, the correct answer is, no, if I were to ask you kids to do that, you should say no. Now, granted, if I would have added, if I was a priest telling you through this, through the thing, I'm sure I would have got a lot more no's. But the question is, why not? Isn't it nice that we're trying to, you know, unite ourselves wholly with God? But with what? We have to remember, when we go to Mass, are we eating just bread and drinking wine? We're not. It is completely and fully transubstantiated into the body and blood of Christ. So one thing we're missing at our homes that the churches obviously have right away is a priest. The priest was given authority and has the power to actually change the bread and the wine into the body and blood of Christ. And as I told you kids, we need to be more excited about this. We witness a miracle every Sunday. During your daily masses right now, you're witnessing a miracle in this world where it's like, we need a miracle. You're witnessing one every single day when the priest makes that body and blood, or sorry, that bread and wine into the body and blood of Christ. So obviously none of us are priests, so we can't do that. The next thing why I bring this up is because I don't want you kids to get lost when you kids get older. I don't. I want you know to. I want you kids to have the best. And what's better, bread and wine, or Jesus Himself? It's not a competition. I would think. Honestly, if you kids were given the option, okay, you're going to have one teacher for the rest of the year, Mr. Sanchez or Jesus. I know you all in a heartbeat would pick Jesus. Heck, you probably pick Jesus over all of us, and that's a good thing. 
So we want to give you the best. Now, the reason I brought this up is because during this weekend, there was a church that said, oh, just go around, grab whatever you need, grab anything that you have so we can all celebrate as a church family communion. And it honestly broke my heart and my fiance, who's not Catholic, it broke her heart because she has seen the value of the Eucharist. She has seen and felt that God is speaking through her through that, that it is him. So it broke her heart too. And during this, it was funny, I guess, from what I understand, people were celebrating with, you know, steak, um, like they had Dr. Pepper, you know, it was, this, it's not good. It's, you're really disgracing it. And then, so that's wrong. So I just want you guys to know, if a teacher or even a priest tells you, go get communion. So through this church service, this mass that we're doing, you can celebrate along with us. No. Don't. It's wrong. And if you look, all the priests are using spiritual communion. They're going to the tabernacle, or when they didn't have the tabernacle, they had the ciborium out there with the host in it, so you can actually say it to Jesus yourself. You are praying for that spiritual communion to come inside you, to Jesus to come spiritually inside you. We didn't play around with, oh, get some bread and some wine. You're okay. You can use that. No, they've been going directly to Jesus. So look at that. The Catholic priest going directly to Jesus. This particular Christian church, and it's not the only one I've been researching. There's a few others that were doing this. We're like, oh, pff, it doesn't matter what we use. It's communion. It's only a symbol anyway. And the last thing I want to get to is why they're saying it's a symbol. And this honestly hurt me more. Now, if I could, I would show you kids a clip of it, um, but I can't right now. But during the service, the pastor forced it. He was like, Take this all of you need it. This is my, uh, symbolizes my blood or bread or body. This symbolizes my body. And at another point, he actually says this represents my blood, but then he quickly switched it to symbolized again. You could tell he was trying to force words into this. And if you were curious, I didn't want to use my Bible. In case some of you are thinking, oh, you're the one using the Catholic Bible. That's biased, which is not true translation. But I decided, okay, I'll humor you all. I went to the sta New Standard American Bible. I guess this is renowned as the most accurate Bible, as is of today. So when I took a look, all the scripture passages of the Last Supper, take, eat this, this is my body. This is my blood. Or take this, all of you, this is my body for you. Do this in remembrance of me. There's not an added word of symbol. There's not an added word of represents. Jesus is clearly talking about his body, his blood. And that really hurts when you see someone who has a church of 10,000 people, 5,000 people, or whatever the number is, and they're misleading them like this. They're adding words in. I want you kids to have better than that. Never be misled. Because for me, the hardest thing this during this church season has been not receiving the Eucharist physically. I have been so dependent on it um, because I have a lot of personal problems in reality, and I've been really dependent on the Eucharist to keep me going. And yes, the spiritual community is nice. It's helping me work camp, but I'm missing fully receiving him. And I want you kids to have that best too. So just remember that if anyone ever tells you to get anything for communion, it's not right. You need a priest first off, to even make something to the body and blood of Christ. But two, Jesus even laid down a path for it during the Last Supper. The Last Supper, he showed a priest is there, the transubstantiation, give it to everybody. He didn't say, all right, um, for the people over there in the next house over, um, whatever you have, if you have a donkey, if you have some grapefruit juice, he doesn't do that. All right? He also makes sure, he also does his best to actually, you know, I'm going to go ahead and do a part two to this. I'm going to go ahead and do a part two real quick.